Hi, North Haven. This video is going to cover how to make your classes in Flipgrids. So first thing is to sign in. If you use Google sign in, you just have to click sign in with Google and your email. Once you're here, you'll see your homepage, which is where all of your classes or grids are going to live. Now this terminology grids might change in the future and become groups. I don't know when that change is going to take effect, but it is something they said that they're going to change. To create a new one, you come over to this red rectangle on the left and click it. Put in the name of your new class. And then here you have to select the way students join your classroom. You can either do student ID, which has them go to Flipgrid on their own, put in your code, which is this down here, and then put in their ID, which is something you make for them. And that's kind of a lot of steps. If you choose school email instead, which is what I'm going to choose, what happens is when you send them the link or when you give them an assignment for the first time and they click the Flipgrid link in the assignment, it takes them to Flipgrid and it asks them if they want to sign up with Google. They click sign up with Google, they click their school email, and then they're signed up. And all they have to do to log in after that is click log in with Google. So it is a simpler way for them to log in and I would recommend that. Then you click next. This page is just verifying that all of your students are going to have the North Haven Schools email and they will. So you can just click next. That's just an extra privacy step. Um, it's one of the reasons that Flipgrid is a program that we can use. Now my class is made. If I want to, I can share it now by clicking copy and sharing this code in an email. I can also share that code to Google Classroom by clicking the Google Classroom icon. And then over here on the left, choosing the class I want to send it to and just making an announcement. And then click go. So this is my classroom now that I made it, or my grid. And the main things on this page that you're going to see is down here at the bottom, there's an assignment or a topic that's already been created for you, and you can use that, or you can delete it. You have up here this kind of picture or image, and that will be a banner on the top of the student's page when they see it. And I'll show you how to change that in a little bit. Underneath the title of the class, you have your code. And you also have the option to add a co-teacher with add a co-pilot. Over here to the right of your class name, you have the share icon, and that just brings up this pop-up again that came up when you created the class. You also have the edit grid icon, which lets you change your settings. The actions drop-down menu has another way to access the settings with edit grid. You can also add a co-teacher here. The duplicate grid is kind of nice. So once you've created the settings in the edit grid menu, the way you want them, you can duplicate your grid so that you don't have to redo those settings for every classroom. Grid notifications, it, you can do that in settings. You can also do that by clicking here and that's just how often they're gonna email you when students upload videos. Teams integration, if you use Teams, I don't know if anyone in our district is using Teams right now, but if you do, you can integrate with Teams. Export data, what that will do is export a spreadsheet and it'll just show for specific assignments how many students watch the videos, how many minutes they watch the video, when they watched it, that kind of information can be exported out into a spreadsheet. And then the last one is delete grid. So if you're done with a class and you know you don't want to use it or um, copy it again, you can click delete grid. Right now, I'm going to come over to edit grid and we can look at the different settings that are available. At the top are just the things you already set. In the features section, this um, active state, active means the students can see it, hidden means they can't. So if you wanna play around with it and um, kind of see how things work, you can hide the grid and students won't be able to see what you're doing. The notifications are what I already mentioned, which are how often they will email you to let you know that there are new videos. Download and share affects the students. So once they're done recording a video, if you have this toggled on the way it defaults, it lets them choose to either download the video they just created or copy a link to it and share that link to other people. So if you have older kids, that's kind of a nice little option for them. If you have younger kids, you might want to turn it off. You know, if we have a five-year-old or a seven-year-old, we might not necessarily want them 
to be um, sharing a link with a video of them, but th that's up to you and your class and how responsible you think your students are. Grid followers could be really nice for middle school and high school students. What it does is every time you create a new topic or assignment, um, it automatically emails the, the topic to the students so that they can complete it. That would be in addition to Google Classroom. So if you're already posting it to Google Classroom, you don't necessarily need this, but if you want them to be notified in two ways so they really can't complain that you didn't let them know they had an assignment, then you could leave that toggled on. Captions it aren't automatic with videos, but you can choose to add auto-generated captions to your videos. And right here, this is just showing you the different languages that are available. So I'm, I'm sure most of our teachers will probably use the default of English, but if you're teaching a world languages class and you wanna change the captions language, you can. This is that image. When I, um, when I said, you know, it would be a banner at the top, this is what it will look like. If you want to upload your own image for your classroom banner, you can do that right here by either clicking on the box and uploading from your computer or dragging and dropping an image into this box. They also have a bunch of different preset ones and you can just click on them and it will change your image to one of those images. When you're done, click update grid down here at the bottom right. And now your class has been updated and those settings have been saved. If you want to, like we mentioned earlier, you can duplicate the grid so that you don't have to um, reset the settings for every class. So this is your class and it's ready to use. And the next video is gonna cover how to send your students assignments and how to um, make your own assignments.